A few weeks ago, hundreds of thousands of people traveled to the Phoenix area to watch the Chiefs and the Eagles battle it out in the Super Bowl. And then hundreds of thousands more people flocked to the TPC Scottsdale Golf Course to watch the Waste Management Open Golf Tournament. For short-term rental hosts like ourselves with properties in the greater Phoenix area, hearing that the Super Bowl was coming to town was exciting news, to say the least. And then when the Waste Management Open was shown to be on the same weekend, you know, we thought we'd set ourselves up to have record-breaking rates. And we did secure a solid booking for that weekend, but unfortunately, they ended up canceling about a week before their stay, and we never rebooked the dates. <laughs> Returns at our Scottsdale property are down year over year from 2021 to 2022. And we have been throwing around the idea of potentially selling the property and rolling those funds into another STR in a different market. Yeah, so when the house sat empty during the biggest weekend of the year, we knew it was time to really take a hard look at our options and then make some decisions to reevaluate the property. Which had historically been a top performer of ours. What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie, and we are real estate investors with a short-term and long-term rental portfolio of our own. And and we also manage a portfolio of about 40 properties on behalf of other owners. If you're a short-term rental host with a property in a currently saturated market, then this video is for you. We're gonna go over our year-over-year -year performance data and then kind of talk about our options for holding versus selling the property. And then if you stick through to the end, we'll be sharing what we've ultimately decided to do with this property after that bust of a weekend. Well, that was a big bust. But first, here's a little bit about why we think our house sat empty during two of the biggest sporting events in the world happening in the same weekend. It still hurts. Yeah, it was not fun. I looked it up and we've hosted three weekends of this tournament since we bought in 2019. We bought in the summer, so we had 2020, 21, 22. And our base rates for those years started going up. We started at about 600 a night, and then the next year it was about 700 a night, then 800 the following year. So we were really anticipating with the Super Bowl and Waste Management same weekend, we thought we were gonna get top prices. This year with the addition of the Super Bowl, we had the house priced at about $1,200 a night. And we were able to secure a four night booking very soon after we opened the calendar, which made us think, Hmm, did we underprice, you know, this day at that time? This was actually a group that was coming out to go to the Super Bowl and to the golf tournament, but then right before that cancellation deadline, they canceled. We have our cancellation policy set to Airbnb's moderate level and similar on Verbo, and this is an effort to attract more bookings, give people a little more flexibility in their travel plans. I really wish that Airbnb would let us attach like a different cancellation policy to special event weekends. Cause we run into this with Coachella Fest out here in the Palm Springs area. It would be really nice. It would. First, after these guests canceled, our first thought was, oh quick, let's raise the prices. Because typically if we get a last minute cancellation or last minute opening for a property, like for Coachella Fest, for example, we can sometimes charge a little bit more because there's not a lot of properties, nice properties left that close to the event. But in this case, we were very wrong. <laughs> we were so very wrong. I went to do a little just prospecting and you know market research and found literally thousands of properties still available a few days before the Super Bowl. And there was you know prices all over the map, but a lot were priced super low, like less than $500 a night for a four bedroom house. So obviously we have a little supply and demand issue happening here, but before we get into that, a little backstory. We bought the property in the summer of 2019, and this was after we kind of evaluated all kinds of STR markets from California to Florida, and we ultimately settled on Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Home prices there were in our budget at the time. It was only about a six hour drive from where we were living in San Diego. And at a state level, it seemed like STRs were supported without a lot of really strict regulation. And apparently we weren't the only ones with this idea. We looked up some data and from 2017 to the end of 2021, the number of short-term rentals in Scottsdale quadrupled. 5,000 in 2017 to over 20,000 today. It's all according to AirDNA. So we were competing with those other dedicated short-term rental properties. And then also quite a few hosts uh, showed up on the market. People 
who lived in houses, got out of town, got out of the area for the weekend, wanted to capitalize on you know, the high demand, a lot of travelers in the area for both events. And then of course there are the many hotels and resorts in the area. Location could have also played a factor. Our house is about 35 minutes from the stadium where the Super Bowl is held, but it is pretty close to the golf course where the waste management tournament was held. Yeah, so in the past few years, we were able to charge high prices and unfortunate reality is things are different now. Could we have played that race to the bottom game and slash prices? Absolutely, but that's just something that we don't like to do. We lowered the prices, you know, continually over those last few days leading up to the Super Bowl to a level where, you know, we still thought it was a meaningful amount that we were charging for the house. We didn't want to give it away, but in the end, we didn't get a booking. This was disappointing, but with bookings that we do have in the spring of this year, we're gonna fare pretty well in this kind of peak season in the area. So not getting a Super Bowl booking combined with what we knew was lower occupancy in 2022, we decided to take a very close look at our earnings and occupancy between those two years. We have another video planned soon uh, to take a deep dive into the financials of one of our properties. But for today, we're just gonna give you comparative data of our occupancy percentage and our gross earnings. 2021, we booked 247 nights or about 68%. And that doesn't include multiple weeks of owner blocks where we use the property or our business partner use the property. And total gross revenue for 2021 was $112,540. 80 cents. Then we looked closely at 2022 where we had 148 nights booked, which is about 40% occupancy. And total gross revenue was $87,425.73 or about $25,000 less than it was in 2021. So we saw a 28% dip in occupancy and subsequently about a 22% dip in our earnings. And that one hurt. The good thing though is the area has undergone a lot of real estate activity, a lot of buying activity, and our property has appreciated about 50% since 2019. Looking at comps in the neighborhood, we could sell the house for at least 300,000 more than we paid for it. We have multiple goals for owning this property. It's not all about the cash flow for us. So we're generally okay with the lower cash return that we got last year. It's still making us solid returns on the management fees that we collect for operating the property and then the partnership distributions that we take. So with all that said, you can can probably guess that we have ultimately decided to hang on to the property and not sell it despite the lower returns in 2022. 2023 numbers after the Super Bowl issue that we had are looking pretty good. We took a $20,000 month long booking that started the week after the Super Bowl. And then we get the tail end of spring training baseball, some quality bookings there. And we're hopeful that we're just able to kind of chug along and, and fill out the rest of the year nicely. That $20,000 month long booking made the Super Bowl weekend feel like a little bit less of a bust. We're gonna continue to operate the property as a short term rental, but we are changing our strategy a bit for marketing and we're gonna make a few changes to the house. The backyard's already great. It has a putting green and a playground, but we are considering a few other ideas to help increase the marketability of the house. We mentioned our marketing efforts. You can go learn about our marketing strategies we're gonna focus on for this year in the direct booking video we did a few weeks ago. We think that a lot of people have been and will continue to panic over the you know, quote Airbnb bust. And it's definitely going to take a particular type of host to weather out this storm. But our hope is that if we can continue to deliver quality accommodations and a great guest experience. And still end the year with a meaningful profit. Supply and demand will hopefully level out over the next couple years with some people exiting the market. Let us know if you're experiencing something similar in the markets you're operating in, whether it's Scottsdale or another place in the States or elsewhere that's currently very saturated. Love to hear about your strategy. If you're outperforming the market, how you're doing it, or maybe you just decided to throw in the towel and try somewhere else. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button if you've made it this far in the video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.